The greatest common factor, or GCF, is the greatest factor that divides two numbers. To find the GCF of two numbers, list the prime factors of each number, multiply those factors that both numbers have in common. If there are no prime factors, then the GCF is 1. So the greatest common factor of the term 16a cubed and minus 12a squared would be 4a squared because after you list them out they both have 4 in common. So then your equation would be 4a squared in parentheses 4a minus 3. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve what is known as an easy trinomial in the world of factoring. And so an easy trinomial is set up like ax squared plus bx plus c when a equals 1. Now this is called an easy trinomial because uh, a equals 1, so there's not much work you have to do. So an example of this would be x squared plus 9x plus 20 and so then since a equals 1 you just break down 20 into its factors and then figure out which of those factors add up to equal um, the b value which in this case is 9 and so 20 plus 1 does not equal 9 uh, 10 plus 5 does not equal 9 but you know it does 5 plus 4 equals 9 so now all you have to do, the work is pretty much done. You just have to set it up as x plus 5 times x plus 4. And there you go. It's factoring the easy trinomial, everybody. Now I'm going to teach you how to solve what is known as a difficult trinomial and a difficult trinomial is set up as ax squared plus bx plus c when a does not equal one so an example of the difficult trinomial would be 6z squared plus 11z plus 4 and so basically what you have to do to solve these is you multiply the a value by the c value and then you take the product of that which in this case the product is 24 and you break it down into its like factoring components and so then you have to find which pair of factors adds up to be the b value in the original equation so in this case 8 and 3 add up to be 11 and so what you got to do from there is you basically like spread out the b value in the from the original equation Once you, all you have to do is write 6z squared plus 3z plus 8z plus 4, and you can see that you basically broke up that 11z into its two um, factors. And so, um, what you have to do from there is you basically have to group the two sections together, and so you can just place parentheses around the two sections and then the next step is finding the greatest common factor out of both the parentheses and so let's do these ones first and so the greatest factor out of this one would be 3z and then the greatest factor out of this one would be 4 And so then once you have found the greatest common factors, you can see that the um, stuff inside this parentheses and the stuff inside this parentheses is the same after you've taken out the GCFs. And I'm sorry, that's a Z, but I accidentally wrote an X and had to draw a Z over it with this giant Sharpie so it looks just like a blob, but I promise that's a Z. And then since you've gotten these two the same, all you have to do now is you take this 3z and this 4 and you put them in its own parentheses and so and that's like the other half to the answer
so the final answer would be 3z plus 4 times 2z plus 1. And we got that by taking this 3z and this 4, put it in there, and then taking just the 2z plus 1 and putting it right there. And that's how you solve the difficult trinomial. In this video, I'm going to talk about special cases when factoring trinomials, more specifically perfect square trinomials. To find whether or not you have a perfect square trinomial, you need to look at the A and C values. If the A and the C values are both perfect squares and the product of A and C times 2 is equal to the B value, then you have a perfect square trinomial. So in this example, both A and C values are perfect squares because x squared, the square root of x squared is x and then the square root of 25 is 5 so you do plus 5 and then to figure out if you're correct you do x times 5 which is 5x and then times 2 to get 10x so then you know that that's the factor and then you'd have to square it in this video I will be explaining how to know when you have a difference of two squares binomial first you see if you have a binomial and if you do you look to see if it's a difference of two squares if these things apply to your binomial, then you have a difference of two squares binomial. To factor this, you get the squares of both of the numbers and add them in one set of parentheses and subtract them in the other and multiply them together. So in this equation, we have 4x minus 25. The square of 4x would just be 2x and the square of 25 would just be 5. So you put one set of parentheses, 2x, and you add them together. And then in the other set of parentheses, you subtract it, and that's how you factor it. The difference between solving by factoring and just factoring is when you solve, you have to put your answer equal to whatever variable is given. If you get your factored product equal to zero, then you can equal out the two sides to get your answer. You do this by taking the opposite number of the terms added or subtracted to the variable. These numbers will be what is equal to the variable. So like in this x squared minus 2x minus 35, you solve it like you would usually do. So get factors of 35 that would add up to equal negative 2, which would be negative 7 and regular 5. So you get x minus, x minus 7 and x plus 5 equals 0. And since it is equal to 0, you have to solve these and equal it out. So you have the plus 7 and minus 5, and those are your two factors. So you get x is equal to 7, and x is equal to negative 5.